everybody. We're going to work on some more cherry burl. For the last video, I started with a whole burl and I cut it in half. This is the smaller of the two sides. So this is what it looked like when I cut it. And it had more of the branch running through it. So I cut a slice off because it's almost book matched and I'm going to make like a serving tray or something out of it. So I took that part and made a couple of slabs that I'm going to dry in the kiln. And then what's left is this chunk here that we're going to start with. I put it between centers and just made sure that everything was going to line up how I wanted it to. And then I drilled a hole with a Forstner bit to make room for the tail center to go. I'm starting out pretty slow here. I've only got the lathe turning at about 280 RPMs. Once I get it rounded off and balanced a little bit more, I'll start cranking the speed up some. Going a bit faster here, about 360. Would have been nice if this camera would have focused on the workpiece and not on whatever it's focusing on. We're getting there. I still have a flat spot, but I've been able to get the speed up to about 560 and I'm going to start preparing the tenon. I am going to core this piece, even though it's not going to be a very large core. I hate to just waste it, so I'm going to, I'm going to make something out of it. The only skew that I have that has the right angle for my dovetail jaws happens to be an oval skew. And that can be a little bit fiddly as far as it wanting to be stable. I have a couple of Benjamin's Best bowl scrapers that I don't use anymore since I have the D-Way scrapers. And I keep saying that I'm going to turn one of them into a dedicated tenon cutter. I just haven't gotten around to it yet.
I was a little bit afraid there for a minute that I had made the tenon just too small, but it's just about perfect. I've got the tiniest of gaps in my jaw, so that should give me a nice strong hold. You can see that the blank is still lopsided, and I did that on purpose when I marked the center point, because when I get this evened out, the majority of the branch is going to be gone, and it will mostly be all burrow figure, which will make more sense once it's round. I always double check and make sure that the chuck is still tight before I start hollowing or coring. And now I'm just going to go over the outside shape a little bit, make sure that it's true after I turned it around in the chuck. I'm going to do a little shear scraping for the final finish on the outside. This was already going to be a pretty small core, but because I shaped the sides straight in kind of a V fashion, I erred on the side of making the core even smaller than I normally would because I didn't want to run the risk of blowing out the side of the bigger bowl. I'm going to do a little burl recap at the end of the video and show you guys what I got out of each side of the burl. I did manage to get three decent sized bowls and two baby bowls plus the slabs for the serving tray so I'll show you guys all that a little bit later. I was really happy with how the first bowl turned out. I had very little movement and I didn't have any cracking at all, so I'm going to go ahead and finish turn all of these pieces green, which means I'm going to get them as thin and even as I think I can go. It's so crazy how you can watch it drying as I go along. I have a bottom of the bowl or a bottom feeder bowl gouge, but I just cannot get the hang of that. So I tend to just use my bowl gouge and this 5 8 Thompson bowl gouge is pretty much my favorite. And then I take a negative rake scraper and go in and blend in the transitions. I'm still just a little thick along the bottom. I marked the depth that I wanted to hit and so now I'm just going to try to make the very bottom of the bowl even 
and as thick as the rest of it. I added a little bit of CA glue in a couple of the spots where there were some voids. I'm hoping that that's not going to chip out on me. I started sanding with 80 grit paper on the inside and the outside. And then I went to an 80 grit disc on a firm backing pad inside and outside. And then I did the 80 grit disc on a squishy pad inside and outside. And then from there I went up through 320 with the squishy pad. I blew off the extra dust and then went over it with denatured alcohol to get the rest of the bits out. And then I'm using a one pound cut of shellac as a sealer. Once that dried, I cut it back with a 4 aught scotch bright pad. And now I'm going to do the Axe Abrasive Paste first. And now I'm going to use Brad's abrasive sanding paste. And for the top coat on this one, I'm going to use the Axe Polish. A toothbrush works pretty good for getting the little bits that get stuck in the cracks and crevices. I need to make a jam chuck for the larger jaws on my Nova chuck, but I don't have one yet, so I'm just using an old glue block to hold it on there. I have a piece of paper towel and then also some shelf gripper in there, and I put the paper towel up against the bowl because I found that the friction from the bowl hitting the shelf liner was screwing up the finish so that does seem to hold it tight enough but it also prevents it from making the finish get hot and sort of melt.
So let's take a look at what I was able to get out of this one burl. I pretty much split it down the center. This half is what we just did today. We got this bowl, the serving tray, and then a baby bowl. The other half was a little bit larger and didn't have really any of the branch left in it. From this half, I was able to get the bowl from the last video, and then I cored the smaller bowl out of it, and then I cored a baby bowl out of it. So these are the three decent sized bowls that I got, plus the serving tray, plus the two baby bowls, which I think I'm going to make a lidded box out of, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, here are some glamour shots of the bowl that we did this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button for me and leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think about this project. Until next time, you all be safe out there. Face it girls, I'm older and I have more insurance.